In this video, we shall look at the concepts behind displacement current. To discuss this topic, let's consider the process of charging a capacitor. So let's assume you have a parallel plate capacitor, like the one shown here. Assume that this capacitor is being charged. So basically what happens, you have current going into the first plate and out of the second plate. Let's call this current at that instant IC, conduction current, IC. While these two plates are being charged, there will be charge build up on these two plates. So let's assume when the current in the conductor is IC, the charge on the left hand side of the plate is positive Q and the negative plate is minus Q. While this charging process is going on, an interesting question arises. We note that there is a current at the amount of IC ampere going into the left plate and the same amount of current IC coming out of the right plate. So the question is, what happens in the region in between? Is the circuit completed in the region between the plates? Is there any kind of current in the region in between the plates? That is the question that we would like to address. So let's concentrate in the region between the plates. Since the plates carry charges of opposite sign, there must be electric fields in the region between these plates, going from the left to the right. Let's call this electric field E. Let's apply Gauss's law to the left-hand side plate. Let's assume this is a cross-sectional area of the left-hand side plate. And of course, you have positive charges on its surface. And the electric field is going like that. The magnitude of the charge is Q, Coulomb at that instant. Let's try to calculate electric flux through a Gaussian surface that encloses these charges. So the Gaussian surface is circular and it encloses the charges as shown here. The area is A. So the electric flux from Gauss's law is given simply by Q over epsilon naught, where Q is the amount of charge in Coulomb enclosed by that Gaussian surface in blue. We note and recall that this capacitor is charging. So that means the amount of charge will change, namely increase with respect to time. So dq dt is not zero. In fact, it is equivalent to epsilon naught d over dt electric flux from this equation. We already know that the conduction current in the wire is dq dt. Now we have worked out another expression by looking at the region in between the plates and we found dq dt is related to rate of change of electric flux. Note this equation refers to process occurring in the wire. The second equation explains what's happening in the region in between. To ensure the continuity of electric current from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, the concept of displacement current was invented. And this expression indeed refers to the displacement current. And now we represent that current with a subscript D, as opposed to subscript C, that we used to denote the conduction current. And this displacement current is given by the following expression. Epsilon naught, which is permittivity of vacuum, because a region in between, we assume it's filled with vacuum or air to a good approximation, times the rate of change of electric flux in the region in between the plates. As long as the electric flux is changing with respect to time, there will be displacement current. 
And for that to happen, the electric field must be changing with time. And for this to happen, the amount of charge in the plates must also be changing with time. As long as these things change with respect to time, displacement current exists in between the region between the plates. If there is a displacement current, there must be a corresponding displacement current density associated with it. And it is given by the displacement current over the surface area. And since the electric flux is quite simply electric field times the surface area, we see that the displacement current density can be directly related to the rate of change of electric field, like that. The constant of proportionality is the permittivity of vacuum. Of course, if you were to fill the region in between with some other materials, then this epsilon naught must be substituted with the permittivity of that material. What this all means is that our expression for Ampere's law, that before this reads as follows, must be modified to include the displacement current. And it goes like this. That is the complete form for Ampere's law. So in this region or that region, displacement current doesn't exist. So the right hand side of Ampere's law is mu naught times IC. In the region between the plates where IC doesn't exist, Ampere's law reads the left hand side equals mu naught times the displacement current. The next question to address is if we have this displacement current or some kind of current between the plates, should we expect magnetic fields in between the plates? Well, the answer is yes. The direction of the magnetic field is like that, concentric circles going like that. Here we are showing only one such circle. So let's assume this is the axis and we want to determine the magnetic field a distance r from the axis, namely the strength of this magnetic field that's going in circles like that. To find the magnetic field at that distance, let's apply Ampere's law. So this is the path. So that means the strength of that magnetic field anywhere on that circle is the same, times the circumference of that path is 2 pi r. The right hand side is mu naught times the displacement current enclosed by that path. Let's call it ID function of R. But we do know that ID as a function of R equals the displacement current density JD times the cross-sectional area pi R squared. And the full displacement current equals the same displacement current density times the entire cross-sectional area pi capital R squared with capital R the radius of that plate while ID a function of R is the amount of current that is restricted along that line ID the total displacement current is the amount of displacement current that exists fully between the region of the plates so using these two expressions, we can rewrite that term in the following manner. I D over R squared times R squared. So what that means is the magnetic field at a distance R from the axis is quite simply mu naught I D R over 2 pi capital R squared, since one of the two R's will cancel. And since we know from current continuity, ID, the displacement current, must be of the same magnitude as the conduction current in the wires. So we can simply write IC over there. And that completes the expression for the magnetic field in the region between the two plates. Let's look at a problem based on the concepts that we have just covered. A parallel plate air field capacitor is being charged as in the figure below. The circular plates 
these plates, have radius 0.06 meter. At one instant, the conduction current in the wires is 0.8 ampere. So that is the conduction current, 0.8 ampere, 0.8 ampere. Find the displacement current density in the air space between the plates. What is the rate of change of the electric fields between the plates? So let's do these two things first. Part A. The displacement current density, JD, is given by that displacement current, the entire displacement current between the region, over the cross-sectional area that area right there and we know the displacement current equals the conduction current in magnitude so IC over A. Now conduction current is 0 0.8 ampere the cross-sectional area is pi capital R squared. Now the radius of these plates is 0 0.06 so 0 0.06 squared and that should give you the answer. And the answer is 70.74 ampere per meter squared. Note, this is current density, not electric current, hence the unit ampere per meter squared. Now, the rate of change of electric fields between the plates. From our discussion, we know that the displacement current density is related to the rate of change of electric field in a following manner. It's permittivity of vacuum times the rate of change of the electric field. Of course, this is air field. We can approximate the air field with vacuum. So we know what epsilon naught is. It's 8.85 times 10 to the power minus 12 dE dt equals JD, which we have computed in part A, 70.74. And we can calculate dE dt. And that would give you the following for dE dt. 8 times 10 to the power 12 volt per meter second. And we have recorded the answer right there. Part C. Calculate the induced magnetic field between the plates at a distance of 0 0.03 from the axis. So this is the axis. And that is the distance 0 0.03 meter. So the magnetic field is like that. And let's write down the Ampere's law. So the magnetic field along that circumference times the circumference of that path 2 pi 0 0.03 equals mu naught times the displacement current enclosed by that path. And that is just the current density times that surface area, pi 0 0.03 squared. This pi will cancel that pi. This 0 0.03 will cancel 1.03 from the right. We know what JD is from there. And you can find the magnetic field at that distance. And your B at that distance is 1.33 times 10 to the power minus 6 Tesla. Note that mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 in SI units. Part D. What is the induced magnetic field between the plates at a distance 0.12 meter from the axis? That means, so that's the axis somewhere here outside the plates. Or on the opposite side, it doesn't matter. So let's assume that the magnetic field is going like that in a circle. However, the displacement current enclosed by this path is just restricted to that. Ampere's law gives B times 2 pi R. Now R is that R. So that is 0 0.12 equals mu naught I D. And this is the entire displacement current, which is the same as the conduction current. So that is 0 0.8 ampere. And we can solve for B at those distance. And you get the same answer as above, 1.33 times 10 to the power minus 6 Tesla. And that is the answer for part D. And that solves the problem. Thank you for watching.